Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to look at generating a falloff map, which we can use if we want to ensure that a landmass is entirely surrounded by water. So for example, we have a height map such as this one on which our terrain is based, and then if we create this falloff map, which is just a range of values going from 0 at the center to 1 around the edges, we can subtract the falloff map from the height map to result in a terrain such as this one. Alright, so in Unity let's create a c -sharp script, and I'll call this something like falloff generator can open that up, and this is going to be a static class, so it won't inherit from mono behavior, and it's just going to have a public static method returning a 2D float array for our falloff map. You can just call this generate falloff map. All right, and can maybe just take an, an integer for the size of the map we want to generate. And so we can start off by creating the map with uh, dimensions of the size variable we've been given. So then we're going to want to populate the map with the values, so we'll need to create two little for loops to loop through it. So just i equal to zero, i less than the size, i plus plus, and the second one for int j equals zero, j less than size, j plus plus. So if we imagine i and j as being the sort of coordinates of a point inside of our square map, I want to now take those coordinates and make them in the range negative 1 to 1. So let's say float x is equal to i divided by the size, and we'll probably want to cast size to a float, otherwise it's going to just round this down to 0, and that will give us a value from 0 to 1. So to transform that then into a range of negative 1 to 1, we can just multiply by 2 and subtract 1. Let's do the same thing for y, so this will be equal to j divided by size multiplied by 2 minus 1. All right, and then all we want to do to get the value to use for our map is to find out which one, x or y, is closest to the edge of the square. So we can simply say this is equal to mathf.max. We want to find out which one's closer to 1, so we'll just say absolute value of x and absolute value of y. All right, then we can just say map with an index of i by j is equal to that value we've just calculated, and then at the end of all of this we can just return our map. Alright, so that's straightforward enough. It would be nice though if we could visualize what we've just done. So let's head over to the map generator, and we've got this draw mode enum. So if we just add a, another option on here for the fall off map, then in the draw map and editor uh, method that we have going here, we can say else if draw mode is equal to draw mode dot fall off map. Then let's say display dot draw texture, and we'll use our texture generator to generate a texture from a height map, and we can pass in fall off generator dot generate fall off map and pass in the map chunk size variable. All right, how many parentheses do I need? Is it just the two? I think it's just the two. All right, so let's save that. Go into Unity. Oh, uh, maybe it's three. Yep. Let's uh, just unhide this plane. And go to change the draw mode here to fall off map. And you can see we've got a nice little fall off map going from black at the center, and then fading into white all around the edges. Okay, so now to apply this falloff map, let's head back to the map generator, and somewhere in here, let's perhaps make a public bool, so that we can choose whether or not we want to apply the falloff map. And let's just create a 2D float array to store the falloff map. We can just generate it once in the start method. So let's just say void. Let's actually make that the awake method. And we can say falloff map 
is equal to fall off generator, generate fall off map, and pass in the map chunk size. Okay, and then we're going to go down here to the generate map data method. And while we're looping through the noise map that uh, we have over here, we can say if we're using the falloff map, then the noise map value at this point, x, comma, y, is going to be equal to noise map x by y, and from that we're going to subtract the value at the same point of our falloff map. And we're going to want to clamp that between 0 and 1, so let's just say mathf dot clamp 0, 1, and pass that in. All right, so save, go into Unity, and let's change our draw mode to color map. All right, um, I'm just going to increase the noise scale. So we've got this little map here, and somewhere there should be this bool, use fall off. Let's set that to true. Uh, okay, fair enough. We're running into the problem that since we haven't started the game, the fall off map isn't actually being created, uh, since of course the awake method won't run. So let's also add the line to the onValidate method. We can say fall off map is equal to fall off generator dot generate fall off map map chunk size. Okay, it should work this time. Let's just uh, clear this error message and hit generate. And we now have this very cute little island in the midst of a vast expanse of sea. So obviously our fall off map is a little bit too strong at the moment. Uh, we really want more of it to be black and then for it to only fade into white uh, much closer to the edges. So what we want is an equation for a curve that will allow us to play with these values. Let's consider the function f of x is equal to x to the power a divided by x to the power a plus 1 minus x to the power a. If I just add a slider for a and make this in the range 1 to say 10, we get this very nice little curve going from 0 to 1, and we can imagine that where y is 0, this is the sort of region of our map that is completely black, and then this curve represents the transition to white, and where y is equal to 1, then it's completely white. We can also get some added control of our graph by multiplying 1 minus x by a new variable b. So let me change this to b minus bx. If we just add this in, make it in the range of, say, 1 to 10, you can see that increasing b just uh, shifts this along the x-axis, which just allows us to uh, control this region that is uh, completely black. So these values seem to work pretty well. a equals 3, b equals 2.2. So let's head over to monodevelop. And over in the falloff generator, I'm just going to create a static method returning a float. Let's call this evaluate for want of a better name. You can take in a float value. So we can write in our float value a. So that was 3. And b, we chose a value of 2.2. We just need to write out our function. So we're going to want to use mathf.pow to raise value to the power a. And we'll divide that by mathf power again, value to the a, plus b minus b times value. Once again, this is all raised to the power a, so mathf.pow to the a. All right, so this is of course a little bit slow with all of these uh, power operations, but the falloff map is only being generated once at the start of the game, so it's not a problem at all. Uh, let's just go over here where we're setting the map value, and we'll just run the value through this through this evaluate method. 
just like so. So just wait for that to compile and then generate. All right, so that looks much better now. Uh, let's try creating our color map. Okay, so that's looking very nice. We can see this within, without the fall off map. Uh, let's change our draw mode to mesh. And if I just hide the plane and enable our mesh preview object instead, this is currently looking very, very flat. So I'm just going to fiddle with some settings, increase this mesh height multiplier a bit, and uh, just change the regions, maybe bring the sand uh, down a little bit, and um, maybe do the same for the grass. All right, that's looking pretty nice. I'll just bring the mountains down as well. Yeah, just something like that. That looks pretty cool. We can just change our seed, run through a couple of iterations. It's all looking fairly nice. All right, so that's everything for this episode. Don't forget that you can support these videos on Patreon if you'd like, and I will see you in the next episode. Until then, cheers.